ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the Homegrown Happy Hour podcast. I've been very, very excited <laughs> about this one, as everybody else out there, man. Like I was telling you, we've uh, promoted this a little bit, and people seem excited. So, welcome on from the Bod's Mayhem Hour podcast, the Bodfather himself, Mr. John Marshall. Thank you, Eli. I appreciate you having me on here. It's uh, I, I just uh, you know, appreciate everybody sharing and things like that on the Facebook and the uh, social medias. It's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I, I'm very humbled about it, honestly. Yeah, man, you have a cult following out there. I, I didn't know how long you'd been doing this. For the people that uh, want to check it out, I got a chance to be on your podcast. Mm-hmm. And you told me on there that you've been doing your podcast for like 11 years now? Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing it since uh, 2011, late 2011. You have tw- that yeah, is 11 years. Crazy man. Yeah, it's uh, it's like we've talked before. It's my escape. It's it's everything to but, me. But it, it's 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 a crazy mindset for somebody to even want to do something like this. Mm-hmm. I mean, this isn't like any regular hobby. No. So, so what would what was your mindset to even make you want to get into doing this? And like for the people that don't know out there, you talk to some big time people. I just talk to local people, which is still very cool. But you're getting interviews with Static X and Zach Wild, like big time people, man. What made you want to take? What gave you the cojones to want to take on talking to Zach Wild? I, I did paranormal for six six years and then um, I've, I got out of it and then I started focusing on music more if that makes sense because I, I play just a little bit but nothing major. Um, then my friend Terry actually got me doing a actual online radio show, mm-hmm. so that's where it kind of started. But um, it all happened. Um, because I want to give back to what happened to me a long time ago, that where music saved my life, and yeah. I just felt like you know, hey, maybe I could do the same or help another band out or be a voice for some local band or anybody mm-hmm. uh, to do what I do. And I, you know, it, it's it's very, it's humbling and and it's it's a lot of work. Yes, and it it's is. a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it's hey, you just I, I know you have that mindset. You told me yesterday that you don't look at this as a job. No. And you have to have that mindset in order to have fun mm-hmm. with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because <clears throat> it, the fun is the interviews. Yeah, you know, doing the actual interview, but the work comes in after that interview because you got to edit, you got to make sure the audio sounds correct, yeah. you've got to, you know, fix Mix, your video master. up. Yeah, yeah, fix your video up if you're going to post your socials and stuff like that. So I can schedule four interviews after work, you know, yeah. and then. I'm still busy after the interview, so I'm still constantly working, even after I'm done with my actual job. Yeah, you know it's it's rewarding, but it's also too very time consuming. Um, so if you like podcasting, get into it and just do what you want to, but you don't have to do it as much as I do. Yeah, I, so. yeah, yeah. You go. I mean. I only do one a week, and and that is that sometimes even gets time consuming and stressful, especially planning them out. And I mean, there's yeah. so much that goes in behind the scenes, and doing one a week stresses me out sometimes. I can't imagine you're putting out like four or five a week sometimes, dude. Like you go yeah. hard. Yeah, you know, you just have to schedule around whoever you're trying to get an interview with, and it kind of works both ways, but. You've got to do the interview when they can do the interview. Yeah. And sometimes I've just been very lucky that their, their interview days falls on my days off, or sometimes they fall in after days that I'm off work. And um, you just have to keep working at it, Yeah. honestly. And I now understand. Like, I used to get a little bit aggravated whenever guests would reschedule with me and, you know, just at the last minute say they couldn't come in, whatever. But now that, like, whenever I done yours yesterday, mm-hmm. I understand now. I get how, like, complicated schedules can get. I've just never been on the other side like I was yesterday whenever we done your podcast. And I, I, I'll i never have those feelings ever again towards a <laughs> guest. I totally get it now. It is, yeah, man, it is wild. But um, I, I know that you answered this question on your podcast yesterday, but I wanted to get into it a little bit more 
on mine. Whenever it comes to guests that you've interviewed, I know like you gave some pretty big names on yours, but mm -hmm. who would you say off the top of your head, top three guests that you've ever interviewed? Oh, wow. Well, man, you put me on the spot again. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course, I've said this a million times, Zach Wild for sure. Uh, Wayne Static. That was my mouth dropped when you said uh, that yesterday. That yeah, was and, crazy. And, and forgive me, I know I've done a, a ton of interviews, and there's a lot of stuff that I've, I'm just forgetting. But uh, Dave Brocky, Odor Sarungus from Guar. Oh, that's cool, him. man. So, yeah. I, I, there's plenty more Doyle from the Misfits. Uh, Eri Vaughn. You got Doyle? Yeah. Whoa, I've, I've interviewed man. Doyle several times. He, yeah. From what the interviews I've watched with him, I need to check out yours. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the interviews I've seen, he's such a nice guy. Just such. Can be. Well, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> well, the interviews I watched, at least, maybe he has different days and where he's in different moods. Sure, and, and that's the thing about, I mean, he's. They're just like everybody else. They're a human being. They have their good days and bad days. Yeah. It happens. It happens even to me and you, of course. And, you and sometimes we screw it up, too, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, one time I got to interview Colin Macri, M Mackerel, however you say his last name. He's mm -hmm. the guy from Whose Line Is It Anyway? The, oh, the, okay. The short the, guy. The older on guy. There. Yeah. yeah, the short older guy. Yeah, yeah, that's Colin. I can't say his last name. And I started off the interview with, like, asking why is uh, – why do they call uh, – the whole Canadian ham ordeal. Mm. I went on some riff about <laughs> that. For some stupid reason, I started off the podcast that way, and oh yeah, it was just totally downhill from there. Oh yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I've took a lot of credit for bad interviews <clears throat> whenever I've talked to big people. <laughs> yeah, you definitely yeah, don't. You make the mistake. <laughs> you definitely don't want to talk about what's in the tabloids. Say, hey, so I heard you were, do you know? Oh yeah. Well, I got to. Uh, I got to talk to. Uh, Bobby Lashley from WWE, and I brought up the Trump match. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, for the people that, that aren't wrestling fans out there, uh, Bobby Lashley took on, I think it was Brock Lesnar or The Rock. And uh, Vince was in The Rock or whoever's corner. Mm -hmm. And uh, Donald Trump was in uh, Brock Lesnar's corner. I think that's how it worked out. I'll have to go back and look at it again. But yeah, he was walking on eggshells when I brought that up. You can tell, like... That his manager was on the other line just saying, wrap this up, buddy. <laughs> it's like Stone Cold Steve Austin gave Donald Trump a stunner. Yeah, that, yeah, that was the match right there. Yeah, I mean, of course I'm going to ask him about that. It was That's history right there. But it's nerve-wracking whenever you get to talk to some of these big people. Do you still get the butterflies 11 years later? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because it's like... First question I ask, is it going to pop off good, or are we going to be pulling teeth, or is it going to be like one of those Chris Farley moments where, uh, do you remember that you was in this band? <laughs> yeah. 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 Like from Saturday Night Live skit, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney. Yeah. 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 Do you remember you was in the Beatles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Such a funny skit, yeah. man. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it really is an honor, man. And it's it's cool to talk to somebody like you that's been doing it for so long. So you're wanting to just do this for the rest of your life, right? I love it, man. Yeah, I, I, I like I said, what what, what like what I, I have what I love about. It, but what do you you love about podcasting and just conversation in general? I love seeing everybody's uh, <clears throat> material that they come up with. I love yeah. seeing everybody doing their own thing. I don't care if there's a, a million uh, streams out there of, of gameplay, which they are, but everybody does their own thing differently. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I love seeing stuff like that being done and people being creative because I think a lot of, you know, and I hope nobody takes this in the wrong way. It's just that grow a little bit, you know, yeah. experiment with stuff like that because you never know. You may mm -hmm. find something that could help you down the road with that. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, some people just put themselves in a box, yeah. it seems like, and they are terrified to step outside of it. Yeah, never be afraid to never be afraid to, to do anything like that. If you think that you can do it and and you're the only one that, that gives yourself the push, do it. You know, I, I only had myself and a friend uh, help me when I first started with this, mm -hmm. and I've never looked back since. And, I mean, everything's not been peachy. There's been ups and downs with it, you know, from yeah. equipment to 
good equipment now what I have for when you first start out. You know, it's it's like I said, I'm I'm very lucky, very blessed, and very humble to be able to help out in some some small part of the way that I can. So yeah, I mean, you really do, man. It's fascinating some of the talks that you have on there. You always ask great questions, and I love how you uh, like interview the bass player sometimes of really big bands. Because, of course, you always got the front man that gets a lot of the hype or the lead guitarist or whatever. But some of these drummers and bass players and just other in, uh, instrumentalists and bands are more interesting yeah. than the big people in them. And those are some of the conversations that I love that you get, man. Yeah, why not interview them? They're from the band that you like listening to. Why would exactly. you not want to enter that person? interview that person, I should say? Uh, just because... I don't get the front man or front woman of the band, the big person of the band. I, hmm. that, that's still huge to me, regardless of who I interview from that yeah. band. Yeah, I know like Motley Crue is Motley Crue yeah. now. But whenever they first came out, Nikki Six was the one writing all of those songs. Mm -hmm. And he was the bassist for Motley Crue. So, I mean, yeah, some of the most interesting people might not be the front man. Yeah. And, and sometimes they can be the le the least interesting people I've come to find out whenever I get to talk with them. You have exactly. some really big stars, man, that are just so plain and just dry. Yeah. There ain't nothing there. You're mm -hmm. really disappointed when you get to meet them. Yeah, I mean, you, you have somebody in the band that could be <clears throat> um, the forefront of, the, of that band, and the lead singer is taking all the... The glory for it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and it happens a lot. And I, I've, I've experienced that during interviews before. Yeah, to where I, I've done interviews and come to find out this person is doing all the writing, but when you go back and look through the credits and stuff, the acknowledgements, it's everybody. Yeah, exactly. So it, yeah, and, and, and it happens a lot, mm -hmm. and sometimes you can tell when those bands ain't gonna be around. Oh yeah, much longer. Mm -hmm. But it is. I, I just love podcasting the, just because of the conversation, man. I, I think that even though social media and platforms like that have so, socialized us in ways like never before, mm -hmm. I think that we're the least sociable that we've ever been in the history of our planet. I mean, you go to a restaurant. And you look at the families sitting at the table. Everybody's on their cell phone. Yeah. Nobody's actually having a conversation. And it's easy to lose hope in the world, especially <laughs> when you watch the news and just see how many stupid people exist. But getting to have conversations like this with people, it gives you a little bit of hope that yeah. there's still smart, intelligent, interesting people out mm. there. It's not all Karens and... <laughs> everything else there's a karen oh there's another karen yeah oh, you, you gotta remind one. yourself that there's still good in the world and man getting to talk to even especially local bands yes you find so many interesting good-hearted people in them just art in general and uh it just gives me a little bit of hope yeah there's a lot of good local bands around here um you know a downtrend for one josh crumb and those guys Great, great band. I've said that for years. Um, you got Ghost uh, Ghost Pilot. Yeah, Ghost Pilot. Yeah, them guys great, great band. Uh, Turtle Cat Podcast. They them they do a podcast too. Check yeah. that out, folks. There great dudes. And uh, Technicolor Nightmare. Yeah, unbelievable. See, I, I will. Whenever uh, I, I was always big into rock growing up, but I was always classic rock. My mom was like progressive 70s my dad was 60s hippie and my brother was <laughs> hair metal 80s yeah. i was in all those i didn't know that there was a totally new style of rock after that yeah. and uh around like 11 or 12 i started finding out like bands like Mudvayne and yes. saliva and <clears throat> seether i mean the list goes on and on mm -hmm. and that's what i love most about technical or nightmare is they have that sound that uh I guess it's alternative rock, technically. I don't know what that style was called necessarily. There's so many styles. You can't keep up with it. I just know that it sounds like saliva, and I like it. Technical or Nightmare is awesome. Man. Yeah. There's another local band around here that's been on my show, and they've supported me a lot, is, is Mirrored Image. Yes. Another great band who has taken their style and just said, you know what? This is us. Yeah. Take us away, you know. 
That's it. And, and, and I love guys like that, too. Yeah. Guys and gals that uh, you, you can't put in that box that we were talking about. Mm. Mirrored Image, especially their new album, it's so all over the place. But that's what I love about it. You can tell the growth from their first album yeah. to now. That's the cool part about this. When you see a band, especially local, you see where they started from to gradually growing into their own style. Yeah. You know, um, that that's that's special to me. When I sit down and I listen to an album, it has to have valleys and peaks from each song. Yeah. Uh, it, and, you know, people are saying, I don't like this album because the band sold out. They're not going 1,000 miles an hour like the last 14 albums. Let's say 14 albums. Yeah. How angry can you be? You know? <laughs> exactly. You yeah, know, yeah. When you go from like 18, 19 years old to 30s and 40s, it kind of, you know. Well, I don't know, man. Merit Image has been pretty depressed on all of their albums. <laughs> <laughs> I love them guys, but yeah, they, they, they've got that vibe. They keep with it. It works, though. Yeah. I, I, I do like it. I, I love their uh, the title track on their new album because, man, it has like, it's just all over the place whenever it comes to musical elements. But it's therapy. Oh, yeah, it's some of the most, especially that song. It's so soothing. But, like, you hear, like, 80s synths in there. Yes. You also hear, like, uh, Tame Impala drum styles. Um, but they probably look at it a totally different way. <laughs> but uh, I, it's just all over the place. And I, and I love music like that, that you can't put into a genre. That's just something that you've never heard before. Yeah. It's such a good feeling whenever something is just so fresh. Yeah. And, it, and, it is, and it's actually good. Music to me is is my everything. It's my soul. It's it's my passion. Mm. It's a I get excited sitting here talking about music, man. Yeah. I mean, I say that I get like when I do my interviews, I say like the the hair stand on my arms, and it is. I, mean, mm. I got chills on me right now. I, I I love talking music. I love everything about it. This is my dream to do whatever I can with podcasting, music, mm. whatsoever. The, so me, this is it. Music, it's it's magic. Oh that, yeah, that's what I've told For people. Sure. I mean, like you you can't explain it. You'll hear a song that take like a song that you haven't heard in years mm -hmm. that takes you back to that one moment, that one memory that was buried deep deep in your mind. It just brings it out there to the forefront. See, I've been terribly depressed before. And I'll hear one of my favorite songs, and it just lifts me back up. Yeah. Or, you know, sometimes I'll hear a sad song, and it brings me down. I mean, like, the power that music has over the human brain, it really is magic. And, it, and it's almost like a religious thing, too. I mean, it's, it's like a religious experience, Yeah. I'll say. It touches your soul, man. Like, you feel a connection to something that... In theory, like it doesn't exist. You're just listening to it. Yeah, it's like it doesn't have artist, a physical form. It, yeah, exactly. It's just sounds. Right. It's vibrations. Yes. That's all it is. Yeah. Yet it brings out. It, it can bring you to tears. Vibrations. Yeah. A bunch of them. Yeah. It's it really is magic, man. And I, I love music. Yeah, I'm sitting here shaking because I love it so much. <laughs> yeah. It's it, 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 so, so. I know that you're like a heavy metal dude. Do you ever? Go on a weird outlaw country music kick or sure, like bluegrass. Yeah, like yeah, you, I, yeah. I didn't think grass. you listened to other styles of music. Oh, I love ska. I love. I uh, love ska, dude. Ska it's such an underrated like, style of music. Yes. Gwen Stefani, she was the queen of it. I'll give her that. I mean, the the whole no doubt it was. It was good. Uh, Hepcat is one of my favorite ska bands. I, ska Hep is great. Cat. I like. Bluegrass, I like Outlaw Country, I like some rap. What kind of rap do you like? Uh, it's got to be like um, the old Dr. Dre stuff. Nice. With a Snoop. Gangster, hip hop, stuff like that. Yeah, Easy E. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling down the street in my six. Exactly. Fall. Yeah, man. I, I love that old stuff like that because you, then again, when you listen to stuff like that, you hear a genuine style of music. You hear a genuine style of a warmth when you listen to those yeah. old songs like that because like we talked about on the podcast with me and you uh you it's like you could feel the warmth in that song is if that makes sense you you can feel like um the sound of that song hitting you um from say like two inch tape recording 
to digital. Yeah. It feels like there's more impact of that song, uh, if that makes sense, man. I don't yeah. Know. Well, I mean, it, it's crazy how a song can be so good that it sticks around for so long. Oh, too. sure. Like you're talking about Easy and Dr. Dre, this was almost 30 years ago now, and it's still just as good today. To some people, I guess. You always have that younger generation that hates on stuff, but yeah. classic rock's another good example, especially bands like, or somebody like Chuck Berry. You know, that's almost 70 years ago, and still people know who Chuck Berry is. Look how Metallica's still selling the Black Album. Exactly, yeah. To this day, to man. To this day. It's how like, insane is that? Dark Side of the Moon with Pink Floyd is the same way. It's, it's just crazy how, like, and ours can be so good that it sticks around that long. I think that's going to be a yeah. problem with uh, the digital age of music, though. See, back in the day, you still had a lot of people that were out there making music, but you had to be good. Yeah. Not everything got airplay. I mean, and even Bohemian Rhapsody, that almost didn't get out there. How crazy is that? That is crazy. That would would have probably never been the hit that it was if it one got the radio mm. play. And... Uh, but Queen's so underrated. I mean, well, still to this day. I yeah. mean, like, there's still some songs that should get more play than they should. But with this digital age, man, there's so much, and the 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 music that is viral, it's it's like it's from TikTok. Yeah. It's yeah. not because it's good. It's because it's got a stupid viral dance associated with I'm it. I'm not doing TikTok. You don't want to see this on TikTok. <laughs> ain't no way this man's doing TikTok. Wait, wait, now two weeks later, I'm on TikTok. No, 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 no. Ain't going to happen. You never know, man. I said the same thing, and now I'm doing... I, I, I do nature videos on there, but that's about it. I don't like to... Like, I'm, I'm not on there myself. I just do nature videos. Appalachian Adventures. Follow it, folks. Little plug right there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I said the same thing, dude. I was totally <laughs> against it. And then they won me over. Oh, no. But what I'm doing, though, with it is, like, I'll show, like, cool nature videos around the area, but I associate good music with it. Oh. And that's what I've been doing. I've been, like, a lot of people that people may not know, I'll put that song in there. Ooh. So, yeah, like, I, I'll, I'll, it's, it's cool how it incorporates videography and music that's I see what like. you did there that's why I like that's why social media it's a, it's a uh, it it's, can be a tool if you use it right yes it's good and bad yeah man like sometimes I'll get on there to associate with family members and friends and then mm. like it's I feel like I'm using it for a good reason and then mm. I'll start seeing posts about Miley Cyrus doing something on stage. I, who, who knows? Yeah. Uh, forget this is a family show. <laughs> but, uh, you get you get my drift. There's some I crazy stuff on there, yeah. and it just makes you like after a while of scrolling, you're like, "What am I even doing? I'm wasting my life here. I'm gonna get off of this for a while." Mm-hmm. I I have a bad habit with that. I uh, there's a lot of people I don't message back sometimes just because I'll throw the phone down. It's consuming. Yeah, man. You, do you like you get that thing at the end of the week that shows you your screen time and stuff like that? Good for you. You must not have that update. I got an update on my phone, man. It tells you exactly how much screen time that you've been. And mine was like, it was right on the verge of four hours. It was like three hours and something <laughs> minutes a day. You wild man. <laughs> but, uh, oh, some people, um, I was talking, I ain't going to mention names, but a younger kid here recently. And uh, I told him about that. And I was like, yeah, three. I was like, four hours a day, man. That's way too much. He's like, look at this. And he, dude, he had like 11, 12 hours a day or something like that. And I would say that there's a lot of kids out there that are the same thing. Yeah. And going back to what we were talking about earlier, like how we're so dissocialized, people are sitting right in front of each other on the phone, not having these conversations that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. I can't I can't stress this enough, you know, put your phones down and talk to your family because ten minutes, fifteen minutes not guaranteed. Exactly. Yeah, man, I've yeah, I, Well, I, I know that you've lost a lot of people and you, I've went through a lot of the same things you have and you can be lost in the blink of an eye. That's exactly right. People have no idea, man. Whenever you lose somebody very, very, very close to you, your whole perception on life changes and how meaningful <clears throat> It is. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, so, I've been down that road, and then thank God music saved me from uh, from one night, and I'll leave it at that. Yeah, so, it, it, it really is It really is that powerful yeah, to save somebody from something like that. Such an amazing thing. 
You asked me this question yesterday, but I didn't get to ask you. <laughs> is there somebody like that you, that's on your bucket list for a podcast? It can be local. It can be big. It can be, well, I guess it has to be a lot. I got, I got to do three. I got to do three. I can't just do one. Ooh. It's like the Lay's potato chips, man. I can't just. Exactly, man. One. Or cats. Yeah. Uh, Metallica, number one. Like all of them or just uh, it does not or well, it, Lars? Uh, original members. I'll okay. say original. Got no it. disrespect cool. to Robert because he's done a heck of a job with, with Ozzy and in Black Label Society and uh, Suicidal Tendencies. And I'm, I cannot remember the uh, other band he was associated with. But no disrespect to him, but I want the originals. Yeah. You know, James Kirk and Lars, doesn't matter which one of them because... As I've said many times at my podcast and several times right here during this interview, if without them, I would not be sitting here. Yeah, Metallica, man. They, uh, so uh, for everybody that's out there knocking me for like Metallica, hey, you do your thing, I'll do my thing. They're the greatest. I, okay, this this feels right to say. They're probably the greatest metal band to ever exist. That, I mean, I, I just don't, especially like still going today, mm-hmm. you know. Like I know there's still Black Sabbath and I'm trying to like consider like metal metal you got Black Sabbath and you had um, uh, Motorhead before Lemmy passed away yeah but even Motorhead Metallica is still way bigger than Motorhead true uh, wow man but it, it would probably be either Black Sabbath or Metallica as being the greatest metal band of all time like just a, the forefathers Slayer's up there, but even then, like, they didn't have the cultural impact that Metallica had. Yeah. Like, whenever you, like, think of metal, you think of Metallica. That's, like, the first band that pops up. So, I don't know, man. That'd be an interesting rabbit hole to dive down of who's the greatest metal band ever. My next one's got to be Corey Taylor Ooh. from Slipknot. Uh, Alex from downstairs, he says Iron Maiden. Yeah. Good. Judas that's Priest. Ooh, that's another good one. Yeah, forgot ah, Judas so, Priest, so man. Many, man. See, I do these interviews and I just make forget. A death. Yeah, make a death. Still, I would still say Metallica over all of them, though. That's a tough See, one, man. Then that's going to be a huge debate between Metallica fans and the Megadeth fans because that's a bad split between those. You know? I think Metallica, <laughs> Megadeth. Do not get me wrong, man. One of the one of the greatest to ever do it. But I would still say Metallica is bigger than them. If you're if they if they done a tour. Megadeth would be opening for Metallica. Yeah. That's... I, people can get mad if they want, but that's just... I can't wait to see the comments on this. You can't, <laughs> and, and you can't leave Anthrax out. There's another band, Anthrax. I mean, we yeah, can talk but, about this yeah, all day long. Yeah, I mean, there's people that like... But I'm saying like the the great, like the top dog of it all. Yeah. It's either Sabbath or Metallica. Like, man, Sabbath, though. <laughs> <laughs> because... Then we go go ahead to go down the uh, Aussie Sabbath or Dio Sabbath. Oh, it had the Aussie Sabbath because they like yeah. they started it, man. Didn't um, Sabbath release their first album in the late '60s? I believe so. That's crazy. I'll, I'll look this up just to make sure. But yeah, I mean, it, like people don't understand that's normal now. Mm-hmm. But a song like Paranoid back in the '60s. If people think Lil Nas X is the devil, they oh, have man. no idea what it was like back then. The same yeah. people that are calling this rapper dude the devil nowadays are the same people that grew up listening to Kiss and ACDC. What what did ACDC stand for? Uh, uh, oh, something something devil children. Yeah. They were saying like I mean all types of crazy stuff, man. And yeah, but people don't know how shocking Ozzy Osbourne was whenever he first came out. Uh, People think that dude's the devil. They have no... Kiss had a blood will. Remember that? I think so, yeah. Yeah, in... in, um, Their fan club? No, there's like a blood will that they used on stage that like threw blood out on the crowd. I know Gene did his blood thing. Yeah, I'll... uh, Uh, I'll, I'll Guar is the one I think did stuff like that, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to do this. I got a fancy phone now. I got a fancy phone. Talking about the Siri. When did Black Sabbath release their first album? I don't have to type anything. Siri's not going to answer you. Oh my gosh, he's taking forever. Sorry, folks. Technology. 1970. Okay. 
Okay, you, right you, on the verge. Roundabout. But, 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 but still, but yeah. still, I mean, that was heavy for 1970, man. Especially when people bought that album, pop it in, they start listening to like Fairies Wear Boots. Yeah. You know, uh, War Pigs. Oh, especially War Pigs, man. People think that's like a dark <laughs> song, but it, but it's a it's an anti-war song if you really pay attention to the uh, thing. Yeah, Sweet Leaf, NIB. There's a Did ton I of stuff. Think of that. What? I, I I guess there wasn't a Blood Will. Maybe I just imagined that. Huh? No, I Gene. Well, Gene did the. Yeah, the, I know. Like he does, like the mouth. But uh, thing. Man, that's. Yeah, but there was like I a, didn't think there, so. there was like a Blood Will man that a band had. Maybe um got them very wrong. Hmm. I'll look it up. <laughs> It might have been it might have been Warrant or somebody like that. I watched some type of head. Warrant. Head, I forgot who. Not, not not Warrant. Wasp. 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 That's who I was thinking about. But some band. I know for a fact, man, out. had a blood will. But uh, Alex, he had a good one right here. He goes, "This is his top three: Metallica, Megadeth, Iron Maiden." It's pretty solid. Can't go wrong with that either. It's pretty solid, Alex. I'll give you credit right there. What? Okay, I know you've been to a lot of shows. Who do you think puts on the best live show rock wise? My God, because I've been to like some some people like really. Uh, the, for me, are we talking about like now or any any show that I've seen? Oh, any show that you've seen, Pantera, for real? What do, what do they do like that's like special? It's just, it was just magical. I mean, it was just a heavy, heavy show. I mean, every song that they played was just like you was listening to the album. I mean, it was no, you know, no cut, no fillers. It was just bam right there, you know. And that was the same tour that I saw Ozzy, too. That oh, was at wow. OzFest. I've always wanted to go to OzFest, so, man. So I've seen Ozzy. That was a great show. But, I mean, for me personally, oh, well, wait Man, see, you do this to me. <laughs> for I, me, I will do two. For okay, okay. So Pantera, and then plus I saw Metallica. Did you go to the Louisville show? Yes, I did. Oh, that was the world record yes. thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and, and I and <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. I bawled like a baby for the per, for the fact. Well, you can edit this out. Uh, for like the first two songs because of what that band meant to me and what they did for me and how they saved my life you know and stuff like what i went through but yeah was that like your was that your first time seeing them yeah oh when wow, I, and I had multiple times to see them before it's just something always came up either work or either um i had to take care of my father at one point yeah you know so um, i gave tickets away because i also take care of my mother uh, I had to give tickets to my buddy Josh Crumb, who helps out with the show, mm -hmm. um, and he saw Metallica at Rock on a Range. Yeah, um, I think I had to work that night or something, man. I didn't get a chance to go. But here's the the uh, world record thing: more than twenty three thousand concert goers packed the KFC Yum Center on Saturday night for Metallica's Worldwide Tour. Yep. The total attendance for the evening was twenty three thousand eighty four, breaking the venue's all time concert attendance record previously set by George Strait in March of twenty fourteen. George does a man. All my exes live in Texas. That's I, I can see why. I can see why. George 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 is the man. Yeah, George Jones is right. <laughs> Wait, so okay, okay. Twenty three thousand eighty four. That's crazy, man. Did it feel like that? No. Was there really? Whenever I see see the biggest attendance that I've ever been to at a show was the Grateful Dead. Mm. That was right around the same number, like twenty something thousand. And dude, it felt like it. I've never seen that many people at a well, show. That was crazy. I, I was. I mean, it did feel like it when you hear people sing along with the song, with yeah. the music and stuff. But w visually, no. I mean, to me. Yeah. Well, it's cool how they have the stage set yes. up too, because like it's they're right, right in the middle of uh, everybody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's really cool. Everybody man. gets a great view of the stage. There wasn't a bad. It, and trust me, there was not a bad seat in that house. Honestly, wow. it, was, it was awesome. Yeah, man. it's there, there's never going to be another Metallica, and those dudes are still going strong right now. I just hope they don't end up like uh, the Rolling Stones. Oh, yeah, they're definitely going to end up like the I Rolling Stones. Not. They are going to be the heavy metal version of the Rolling Stones. <laughs> they're going to have James out there on an oxygen tank, taking breaths in between 
Enter Sandman. Could you imagine him doing his yells out there? <laughs> <laughs> hey, if, if the money's there, man, they're going to do it. Have you tried their whiskey? The uh, no. blackened, I think it's Not called. Yeah, no. I haven't tried it either, but I'd say it's good. So, it, with, with the drinking problems that James Hatfield has, you know that whiskey's got to be good. Oh, yeah. That's like weed coming from Willie Nelson. <laughs> you know it's going to be good. Whiskey coming from James <laughs> Hatfield. <laughs> so, like, the other um, you're asking me about... Uh, Top people want to get on my show. Corey Taylor, Slipknot. Such an interesting guy. I hadn't. What's the band? Other band he's in? Stone Sour. Stone Sour. You would never know it. No, you would not. I, I definitely would love to have Ozzy on the show, but that's not going to happen. Nah, so dude, I mean, how I'm cool with that? You know. How I'll long? Never. How long do you think now that Ozzy's been dead for? And his body's just still going from all the drugs that he's done his entire life. It's That's amazing. It's probably he's probably been dead for about twenty years now, and he's just still going. His mm-hmm. his body just hasn't caught up yet. That man, I'm I'm yeah. I'm so happy that he's still around, but God, you can just tell nowadays. It breaks my heart. Yeah. Uh, other than Ozzy and Corey and Metallica for sure, uh, Glenn Danzig. I'd love to interview Glenn Danzig. <sighs> love to. That's you talk about an intimidating dude. Uh, that he's just I mean, yeah, it would intimidate me and I'd yeah, be, just like yeah, yeah. He's he's a brute. I mean, he's a But it's like after after I get into the interview when I'm like that sometimes it's I just I'm just regular me then. Yeah. Because you it, see how they are and you're just like, Well, I have to stay around this route. Exactly. man, there's never gonna be another <laughs> band like the Misfits. No. And people talk about Lil Nas X just putting a little drop of blood in a shoe or whatever. Go look up some of the lyrics of a Misfit song. I can't even dive into it. I can't. I can't even say close to what they say. Oh in those songs. yeah, yeah. Like, what, what's the one about the uh, there's the, die, the die. baby? Oh yeah. Let's yeah. Da da, my darling. There's <laughs> Alex just said. Gg Allen. Yep. 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 Yeah. That's another. One. People don't know, man. They you're y'all are worried about this little rapper dude. It's been way worse. Way you look at Manson when he first came out. Yeah, dude. And you know, from where he started with his, it's a, it's a niche. It's it's their gimmick. It's you know. Yeah, it's it's. It but makes, supposedly he's lived up to that. What he preaches is what he he is. So. Yeah, well, it's disappointing when they don't. Like yeah, I, I yeah. watched an interview with Rob Zombie, and apparently, like he got mad at a skate park that was near his house, and like called the cops on it or something like that because they were being too loud. Oh, my God. Rob Zombie wow. filed a noise complaint. I was so disappointed. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you made a house of 1,000 corpses. You can't be calling the cops on a bunch of skating kids. Oh, man, got to go to bed, boomer. <laughs> it's like you want these rock... It's, it's kind of messed up, though, that like we look for these rock stars to live this rock star life because it does take a toll, man. But God, it just makes for some good stories for us fans to read. Yeah, if you could ever get like somebody that was from the '80s who actually lived that rock star life, like uh, Motley Crue, for a great instance. example. Yes. Yeah. The Guns Dark- and Roses. Yeah. You know? e- even them and Motley's, they take the cake for me, man. There wasn't many bands like them in the '80s. No. They when they came on the scene, I mean, they just floored it. And they, and just like the crazy stuff that they done. Like behind the scenes. See, I, I got to uh, read the dirt before like the movie mm-hmm. was released, and a lot of people probably think that some of the stuff in that movie is just for the movie. They mm-hmm. were no, they were That's true. They, they were legit throwing air conditioners out of buildings onto people's car. That scene in the movie actually happened. They came that close to killing somebody. Oh, uh, yeah. Vince did. I mean, it's <laughs> they were. They lived that life of yeah, a true man. rock star. Yeah, I mean, you, you, yeah, you think of rock stars. It's Motley Crue. Every single, besides Mick, Mick was the only one that you don't hear a lot about. He was like the dad of the group, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Kinda. he was a lot older. Yeah, yeah, phenomenal guitar player. And even that man, he what don't he have? He's Parkinson. He's got some type of disease, but I don't something. know exactly what it's. But he's got a a solo project that's coming out soon. Yeah, he still rocks it, man. Even even if, even if he's got to stand a little bit more still, yeah. he still rocks it. Yeah. Vince has gotten fat though, so fat. 
Yeah, I, I, I love the meme that I see. <laughs> I love it too. <laughs> Kickstart my heart attack. There was oh, one of them. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> it goes on. Especially on. like the abominable snowman from Rudolph the Nose Reindeer. <laughs> yeah. And Vince, comes, Vince, I think, actually commented on it. Said, Please stop sending me this. <laughs> oh, um, Alex says degenerative bone disease. Yeah. Yeah, that's Schmick is still rocking it, though. Thank Ta- you, Alex. Yeah, he's a lifesaver, man. He Ge- is. Gear Heart Radio Jesus. Now we can't call him that because he ain't got the long hair. Oh, yeah, we're calling him Judas. Okay. That, that's the that's the new nickname now, Gear Heart Radio Judas, because he has short hair now. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Alex. He, he really is great, man. He's phenomenal. He helps us out a lot because I'm dumb, and I just talk out of my butt so much on this podcast. I desperately need that guy. <laughs> But man, this you do is, a good job, man. Don't 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 cut yourself short. I, I I'm not one of those. I, it's not that I'm not confident. I just don't care. Like I still want my product to be good, to an extent. You know, I still want it to be a good product, but I like to have fun with it. I don't. Uh, that's whenever the main you came thing. in here, I didn't have anything written down. No. Was, we just go with it. We talk. So, it's just having fun and having a and, good conversation. Yeah, and like we were saying earlier, uh, before, whenever we started this, whenever you make it a job, whenever you start trying to be so serious with it, and I have been at times, and whenever I was, I was so depressed, so stressed, anxious all the time. And now that we're able to go for a little while and uh, just have a little bit more freedom with it, it's... It's a lot more fun. Yeah, you have to. Don't make your hobby a job. Exactly, you have to take time away from that that job or that hobby, um, and just have you time. Yeah, I, I went. I went two or three weeks without doing an interview. You yeah, know? and some and sometimes you need that break, man, and, and it's it's necessary too. Got to mm-hmm. keep that mental straight. But you've been killing it, man. I mean, really. You have, and I, I can't I appreciate wait. that. And I hope anything that you need, man, I'm always here to help because, dude, your interviews are so much better than mine. You have <laughs> people from Dropkick Murphys on there. You've had Static X members. The people out there really need to check you out, it's like, especially if you're a diehard rock fan out there, folks. You won't believe the people this dude gets. I get so jealous. So for the people out there that want to check it out and see all the podcasts and all that good stuff, tell the people where they can do that and what you got going on, too. Coming up, um, I have an interview actually tonight that's going to post uh, with Images of Eden. They are a phenomenal band. You want to check those guys out. And uh, uh, I do a lot of local, not not locals. I do a lot of local as far as like underground band stuff like that. Yeah. Um, there's some stuff in the works, but who knows if it goes through. It's just one of those things you put the request in and you talk to them and this goes back and forth. It's like dueling. Yeah. I say, yeah. I say it does take a while to lock down some of these now. It does. And, you know, when, when those interviews do lock in, it, they're, they're well worth it. Yeah. They, they really are. I have another interview coming up with Shahaz Tickton from Raw. That's going to post uh-huh. uh, hopefully soon. Um, there's some tidbit of information about a band who's coming up with a new album that I didn't think would ever put a new album out. I, I'll, I'll say this much, and I'm not going to spoil it, but we did mention them earlier. Dig. Yep. I'll, dig. Just, I'll just say that. I'll just. Man, I'm so excited. Whenever you told me yesterday, my mouth dropped. I was like, oh yeah. my God, that's so exciting. Uh, to keep up with me on what I do with Bod's Mayhem Hour, it's very simple. Just go to. Uh, you can go to Facebook and look at Bod's Mayhem Hour. That's B O D S Mayhem Hour. Um, I'm also on YouTube. You want to subscribe to the YouTube channel for sure because we give I give out uh, giveaways. I give out stuff every tier that we reach. So I'm at 500 right now. At 600, I'll give out another one. 700, 800. I w- I Ooh, really man. hope that that would take off. I really do. But if it does, it does. If it don't, it don't. That's fine. But uh, everything that I actually give away see here's another little thing is like people don't understand is like what i actually give away some is sent to me but other things i give away i have to buy i put everything back into the podcast yeah so you i'm all i'm all over the place um instagram twitter uh facebook of course just look up bods mayhem hour if you go to uh facebook all that stuff's on there um you can Reach out to me on Bod's Mayhem Hour on Facebook, and I can send you the links, stuff like that. And we're on every we're I should say me. Uh, um, Bod's Mayhem Hour is actually on every platform that's out there. 
streaming wise just about so if you got spotify apple apple podcast um google podcast stuff like that i am there dang so, man you got it covered i do and like you said that's where all the work comes in yeah, you got to do it man yeah. i hate that side of it i hate social media well, i don't hate it hate's a strong word i dislike all that time and effort spent on social media sites that i don't spend any time on in my normal time i'll say that yeah it's a yeah. lot of work a lot of work and, and and especially all the work that you put into it man you are really going hard and i'm it's awesome how you said earlier that like you see people grow whenever i first met you here like six years ago i've seen you grow the way you have man and it's it's awesome to see all the good stuff that you're doing man thank you and yeah dude you i'm i get so <laughs> jealous of you you're you're the one person that like gets me going that like you know wow you, you need that person that i like, inspire come on you. Out, eli yeah man you're that person <laughs> you really you really are dude and uh whenever i see you doing all this it just inspires me to do something so yeah man you're a huge inspiration to me oh thank you and you wow. should be to every podcaster out there you're the og bot father man but thank you thank you well hey thank you for coming on the show man i'm glad we finally made this happen yeah and it just it's perfect how it all worked out we had the cameras and everything it's like it was meant to be this was a beautiful moment right yeah here. we was gonna do like a video shoot and i was like nah i can't do no video sesh today yeah but Gotta. <laughs> here we are here we are hey man thanks again dude we'll do it soon again we'll do it soon and go a little bit longer sure. and dive yeah. deeper into it yeah, most definitely. And uh, your podcast, your interview is coming up very soon on Bod's Mayhem Hour too. So, uh, for the people out there, I was a little <laughs> bit loosey goosey. We, we, I, I was, I was having fun. So, uh, I, we'll see what I said. I had a good time. It was a fun time, man. It, it was, really was a very good time. It was the first time I seen oh, oh uh, Eli over here just loose as a goose and just blah 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 blah. All the way <laughs> yeah. through it, I was like, wow. <laughs> he has a lot of editing to do. Let's say that. But it's good. I like, I like to see people like that, man. I like to see people out of their comfort zone. I like to see people who they truly are. Yeah. Well, well I, I haven't done many interviews on the other side, but yeah, dude, you do a fantastic job, Adam. Everybody should check it out. Everybody should check it out. So everything that he mentioned, check it out, folks. And John, thanks again, brother. No problem whatsoever, man. I appreciate you for what you guys do. Hey, anytime, man. And folks, we'll see you next week. Boom. Dude, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs>